Today I want to show you the most essential, helpful and game-changing mods as of January 2024 for your beloved game City Skylines 2. And man, these mods come with so many features that everyone should take advantage of. First I'm gonna show you where to get them, how to install them and then what they do and how they function. If you already know the first two steps, check the timestamps and you can skip to the mods part. All links to all mods are listed in the description below, so let's get into it. By now, you may or may not know about the developer's modding platform called Paradox Mods, which is already integrated with many of their other titles like Stellaris or Surviving Mars. But for City Skylines 2, that integration is not ready yet, and you all know very well what an important role mods play in this game, as well in City Skylines 1. The modding community couldn't wait no more for the release of this platform, so they got to work, and they came up with their own version of Paradox Mods called Thunderstore. So, until the release of Paradox Mods, this is the place where you can get your mods, and maybe even after the release, Thunderstore will remain a very nice alternative. We'll see. For First thing first, you need to go to thunderstore.io, link is in the description. After that, mods can be installed in two ways. One is via this mod called R2 Modman, which is actually an app, basically it's your handy mod manager. From this app you can install, uninstall mods, update them, you can enable or disable various mods and more. To install this, it's really straightforward, just hit manual download, open the archive, run the installer, follow the steps in the installation window, and when it's done, open the application. From the list, search for CityScanLens2, set as default and create a new profile. After the install step, you will be greeted on the install page which will be empty because obviously you don't have any mods installed so just go to the online tab. But first of all, a critical aspect here, for any mods to function, you will need to install this spin mod called Baby Next Pack. Without it, the mods won't run whatsoever. After you downloaded this mod, you can proceed to download any other mods you like from this list. It's that easy. The other way to install mods is a little bit more complicated, but if for whatever reason this is how you wanna do things, I'll show you how. Again, after clicking the link to thunderstore.io, download and install this mod called Baby Next Pack. Without this mod, there is no way any other mods will work, and you'll see why in a minute. Click on manual download, unzip the archive, and move the contents of the Baby next pack folder to the game directory, which is easily accessible by right clicking on the game from your steam library, manage and browse local files. After you paste everything here, you need to run the game first. If a comment prompt shows up when the game is loading, then everything is in order. You can then quit the game and head back to Thunderstore. From this page, choose any mod you like and click manual download. Now back in the game directory folder, open the Bepi next pack folder and paste the archive you've downloaded into the plugins folder. The last step here is to right click on the archive and select the extract to option. Then you can delete the archive and hooray! the mods had been installed. But every time a new version of the mod is released, you will have to repeat this process and make sure to delete the older version first. If you choose to use the R2 Modman method, you will have to launch the game from this app via the Start Modded button, otherwise the game will run in vanilla mode if you launch it from Steam. But if you use the second method, then the game will start modded right away from Steam. Now let's talk about some mods, and in the meantime make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you won't miss any future videos and because it helps me a lot. Thank you! The first mod I want to talk about is one of the most famous mods from City Skylines 1 and it's called Anarchy. The functionality of this mod is pretty simple but adds a lot of freedom to the game. It allows you to place any building, road, track, alley, etc. in any way you want. Meaning that you can place buildings over roads, vegetation in roundabouts or closer to roads or buildings, you can make slopes as steep as you want, tighter turns, upgrade roads that the game thinks are impossible to upgrade for whatever reason, and so many more. Basically this mod disables the collision or the error checker, whatever you want to call it. It can be activated via this icon right here or by pressing Ctrl plus A from Energy. And it works for every tool or building where this icon is displayed. Also, don't forget to check the settings located in the options menu which allow you to customize the experience of using this handy mod. The next mod is Line Tool Light. It allows you to place trees and bushes into various ways from straight lines to arcs and circles. To use this mod, just have to select one tree or bush and go for one of these three icons here to activate it. Then a lot of options will appear which enable you to modify all sorts of parameters. So spacing lets you adjust the space between the objects. If you set it to 50 meters, let's say, it will place the trees 50 meters apart. But what if you want to start and end the row with a tree? Then you will activate this tool which will place an object at both ends of the line and the longer you go it will spawn trees inside the line but of course this time at an approximate distance to the one you set. Next is the rotation tool. From here you can add a fixed rotation to the trees or you can add a random rotation by clicking on the dice so when you look at the row they look more realistic than the other ones with no random rotation because they look like copies. So that's why I always build with this feature switched on. The last two tools add variation to the placement. Maybe you don't want to build a perfect line of trees equally spaced. Then you can add spacing variations so the trees will have a plus minus difference of a few meters between them and offset variation to space the trees left or right of the axis. The last option here is also the first, which is a fence mode. This acts like a quick setup to place objects as close as possible to one another without overlapping so you can create a natural fence. But I don't like to use this because it takes away the random rotation feature and when you place trees and bushes they all look like copies and for me realism is everything. Another mod that works best with the line mod is the tree controller. 
This mod allows you to control the age of the tree or wild bush when you plop it down, from a sapling to a full growth and even in a dead state. If two or more ages are selected, the mod will randomly choose one growth state every time you place a tree down, so you get as many size variations as possible. When you select the place multiple mode, a new option will appear called sets. This will combine all hardwood trees, all coniferous trees and all three wild bushes into three categories so you can paint with the brush multiple objects at once from the same type. The next tool mode lets you change the age of already placed trees and wild bushes, so you can choose an age and with the first selection tool you can click individual trees to make them younger or older or again you can select multiple ages and let the mod decide. With the second selection tool you can modify the ages of trees inside buildings and parks. The third one will give you a brush so you can paint a larger area that also affects buildings and the last selection tool will affect all the trees from the entire map as soon as you press right click. Watch watch. Bam! No more dead trees. If you played long enough on one map I'm sure you have encountered this problem and you had nothing else to do than to bulldoze the trees and replace them and wait for another year to fully grow back. And the last tool mode allows you to change the trees and bushes with other trees and bushes. Again you have the sets options to allow for multiple replacement of trees from the same category and other than this it works the same as the third tool mode. This mod also has a few more settings located in the options menu of the game which allow you to have dead trees or green trees in winter, disable or enable tree growth, to choose the algorithm for the age selection when plopping or replacing trees and to select another color scheme for all the trees and wild bushes. The next mod I will talk about is yet another famous mod from City Scanless 1, it's called Extra Landscaping Tools. And if you don't know what it does, then let me show you. So, if you bring up the landscaping tool in the terraforming tab, you will see 4 new familiar icons as well as 2 new settings to the left. Well, it may add a ton of new brushes of various shapes and sizes and the ability to change the brush angle, you can also add resources to your map. For example, if you want to build lots of farms near some country roads, you can paint some fertile soil in those areas and the same with oil or and underground water deposits. The next feature this mod brings to us is the surface painter. In City Skylines 1 we had a brush to paint the surfaces but in City Skylines 2 the surfaces are painted in the same way you paint the working areas of specialized industry buildings or the landfill at the garbage center. This tool is very useful for filling up the weird gaps between buildings, creating beach areas, uniting pathways, adding piles of sand or rock in the industrial area and so many more. Traffic Lights Enhancements Alpha is another useful mod that adds some features that I thought and hoped would be in the game from the very release day, but they didn't. The new vanilla road tools may give you a little more control over your intersection than you had in City Skylines 1, but not enough. Luckily, this mod gives you a lot more control over your traffic lights and the lanes, so without further ado, let's take this intersection as an example. Now, to activate this tool, you just have to navigate to the Road Services tab in the Roads tool and select the Traffic Lights icon. Before, with this tool, you could only activate or deactivate the traffic lights in an intersection, but now, when you click on this tool you will see a little tab appear on the left side which will ask you to select an intersection. After you select the intersection a lot more options will appear in the same window. There are 6 options for the traffic lights and one tool for the lane directions. The first option is the vanilla mode which resets the traffic lights to the vanilla settings. Split phasing allows cars from one road to go in all directions as well as pedestrians on the left and right roads to cross the street. Advanced split phasing allows the cars from one road to go in all directions but now only pedestrians from the road on the right can cross the street and the cars from the left can take right turns. And the last option, protected left turns, works best if you upgrade the road with a 5 lane asymmetrical road to allow for separate left turns because this tool will allow opposite sides to take left and then go straight and right along with the pedestrians from both left and right sides. But after you upgrade, use the lane direction tool to set your lanes right. Click open, select one road, enable or disable the desired direction, click save and save again on the other tab. The last options allow for pedestrian crossings to turn green all at once and to always have a green signal on the right turns. My favorite combination is to have 3 lanes for each road, set on the advanced split phasing and with the last two options unchecked. And the last mod I will talk about today is Legacy Flavor. After installation, you will see near the info views panel this new icon that looks like a backpack with cat ears. This mod will allow you for all sorts of UI customizations and various options. You can get rid of that white interface when placing service buildings, stops, etc. It can display the road length into units, which is equal to one cell from the grid. It can alter the sun's position and the weather. It has a lot of other customizations for the zone colors, cell colors, some color blindness modes and the UI team selector and builder. This week's CEO word of the week caught my attention because they shared some information about the modding support and since I already had this mods video on roll, I thought that I could give you a short insight. So basically, by the end of March they will release a beta version of Paradox mods so the modders can start to do their thing. After this step, a beta version of the map editor will start to roll out and the asset editor will come out as well in a beta state but only after they sort out all of their other technical issues. Other news tell us that the console edition is making progress but they don't want to commit to any release date yet and that we'd rather see the beach properties expansion 
Game Pass released sooner. And last but not least, a new update should be rolling out in the upcoming weeks that should address some AI issues like stuck maintenance vehicles, abandoned dogs, how the lead value is affected by the surrounding pollution and a fix for the extremely high or extremely low tax income. I want to thank and congratulate all the modders for the amazing work in creating these mods and for how good the UI integrates with the vanilla look and feel of the game. It almost makes me forget that I'm using a mod. Really amazing work guys, keep it up! All the links to all mods are listed in the description in the same order I've talked about them and as always, leave your thoughts in the comments section, share this video with your friends and don't forget to follow me on social media as well. Bye bye!